Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do a good example of finding the second moment of area. Here we have this portion right here, and we're going to do it relative to the y-axis. Now, of course, we know that the equation is a double integral of x squared dA, where dA is defined as this small little strip that would be the height, which is h minus y, and the width, which is dx. Also, the equation of this line right here is y equals kx to the 5 halves, and k can be found by assuming that when y is equal to h, x has to be equal to w. So therefore, we can solve for k, which is then h divided by w to the 5 halves power. Now, let's find the second moment of area of that particular plate. We think of it as a thin plate that has no mass associated with it and no thickness associated with it, but it will give us the same thing as the moment of inertia if it did have thickness and did have mass, uniformly distributed. We're probably going to be able to turn that into a single integral instead of a double integral, and we'll see in a moment why that is the case. Well, first of all, dA is going to be replaced by h minus y times dx. So this becomes the integral of x squared. Instead of dA, we're going to have h minus y times dx. And notice we're going to integrate only over the variable x, so we have to get rid of the y and replace it by kx to the 5 halves. So this is then equal to the integral, and of course we're going to integrate from 0, x equals 0, to x equals w, and x squared times h minus, and instead of y, we'll write kx to the 5 halves power times dx, which means we can now separate that into two separate integrals. So this becomes equal to, we can factor out an h, h times the integral of x squared dx, from 0 to w, and then minus k times the integral from 0 to w, and we multiply x squared times x to the 5 halves, that would become x to the 9 halves dx. All right, let's integrate those and see what we get. This is equal to h x cubed over 3, evaluate from 0 to w, minus k x to the 11 halves divided by 11 halves evaluated from 0 to w. Now it looks a little mean, but I think when we plug in the values, things will simplify. All right, so this becomes equal to, when you plug in the lower limits, you get 0, so we can ignore the lower limits. We only need the upper limit. So there we get 1 third h w to the third power minus when we bring that to the numerator, it becomes 2 over 11, so 2 divided by 11 times k times, we're plugging the limit, we get uh, w to the 11 halves power. But now we realize that k is the same as h divided by w to the 5 halves power, so let's make that substitution. So this becomes 1 third h w cubed minus 2 elevenths, Instead of k, we're going to write h divided by w to the 5 halves times w to the 11 halves. And of course, we can simplify that. So this becomes equal to 1 third h w cubed minus 2 elevenths. And this becomes h w to the, let's see, 11 minus 5 would be 6. 6 divided by 2 would be 3. That would be h w cubed as well. And now you can see that we have an h w cubed in each term. We can now subtract the two from each other. So this is equal to the common denominator is 33, so it would be 11 over 33 h w cubed minus 6 over 33 h w cubed, and that becomes equal to 5 over 33 h w cubed. So that is the result that we get when we calculate the second moment of area relative to the y-axis, which in essence is the same as calculating the moment of inertia of an object of that shape that would be rotating about the y-axis. You get the exact same result, except we simply ignore the mass of this particular object and the thickness, and we get the same result either way. 
And so using the area makes it a lot easier to calculate the moment of inertia. And that's how it's done.